Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery of 18 Earth-like planets from the old data from the Kepler-2 telescope. Today we're going to discuss how these planets were discovered and also what exactly makes them so special. Welcome to What The Math. Now all this actually comes from the two papers you can find in the description below. And the first paper talks about a discovery of a fourth planet in the system where we already knew about three other planets. And here um, it also talks about the specific resonance or pattern with which these planets orbit. And the second paper talks more about the 17 other terrestrial or Earth-like planets that were discovered um, through this very thorough analysis. Now before I explain to you what kind of planets they were, although Technically, we don't really know much, to be honest. Let's just briefly talk about what they actually did to discover this. So for this particular analysis, the scientists use the data that's already available publicly from the Kepler-2 mission. Uh, that's the second part of the Kepler mission, um, where they investigated the 517 stars that Kepler-2 telescope was looking at. And previous um, analysis used this model. This is called BLS, which is also known as the box least square model. In other words, uh, the way that we used to find planets is by um, having an actual program that looks for these dips, but it looked at them uh, in a very square fashion. But the new algorithm that was used for this particular discovery is based on this freely available Python program known as Transit Least Squares. Now, I'm a huge Python fan. As a matter of fact, I used to teach Python professionally for many, many years. And um, I've used it myself a few times. It's very, very, very brilliant if you like math and if you like programming. But for this particular video, all you need to know is that the way that it searches for data now is a little bit more smooth. And so in other words, it's able to find transits of planets with a lot more accuracy than before. And using this algorithm, they were able to discover these 18 uh, planets. But what's really interesting about this particular discovery is that all of these planets were smaller planets, very similar in size to Earth, or slightly bigger, up to about 2.2 uh, radii, or actually even smaller. As a matter of fact, this particular mission discovered one of the smallest exoplanets we've ever found, the second smallest. Now, this right here is the smallest exoplanet that we've ever um, found. This one is um, in the Kepler-37 system, and it's known as Kepler-37b. It's just a little bit big, bigger than the Moon. Our Moon is very comparable in size and potentially actually composition to this object. But the planet that they discovered is about 70% the radius of Earth, making it roughly somewhere in between the Moon and the Earth in size. Uh, now, we don't really know what it looks like, we also don't really know what it's composed of, but we can only guess that it's very likely a terrestrial object, similar to Mars and potentially planets like Earth and Venus. And I think this picture right here sort of gives you a very good um, descriptive image of what they were able to find. So, this is Earth, this is Neptune, this right here is the second smallest planet they've discovered, and the rest are very similar to Earth. But this planet right here, with a relatively difficult name, is also very special because it's in the habitable zone of its parent star. In other words, it has a potential to have liquid water and, for all we know, atmosphere and maybe even habitable conditions. Maybe life? We don't really know. Now, this object is roughly around 1.87 uh, times larger than our planet, and it's potentially also what's known as a super-Earth, so it could be uh, a water world, it also could be an object that's filled with a lot of gases and a very thick atmosphere as well. Um, so we don't really know what exactly is happening here, but we know that it's in a habitable zone of its parent star, and um, it might have an actual liquid ocean on the surface, because that's how we define habitable zones. And specifically, this algorithm that was used is extremely interesting, because it allows us to very accurately discover um, very similar to Earth planets, with extreme precision. And so the next step for these scientists is to look again at the data from Kepler-1 mission that looked at a lot of different stars and to apply this algorithm and try to discover more planets. Their assumption that they'll find at least a hundred more terrestrial worlds that we missed the first time. And so maybe just maybe we'll find more potentially habitable and exciting new worlds similar to the object they refer to as EPIC 2012 
Now, this is at a distance of over 500 light years away from us, so it's not really that close, but we might find objects that are closer that have very similar planets. And so this is one research team that I really want to follow just to see what they discover in the new data set. And also hopefully they will be able to apply this particular analysis to other data from other telescopes as well. And by the way, if you're wondering about these other terrestrial planets, most of them, or actually almost all of them, are way too close to their parent stars and have really, really high scorching temperatures up to about 1000 degrees Celsius. So except for this um, very interesting planet, none of the other ones might really present any scientific interest until later on. Nevertheless though, I'm definitely excited to see what this team discovers in Kepler-1 data and what they uh, go on to make later on as well. Until they find something else, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about space and the sciences from this mission. Let's end this mission just like we used to back in the days by colliding things and, well, I guess, destroying Earth. And this time we're going to destroy it with two newly discovered terrestrial planets. Goodbye, Earth. You're now going to be part of this bigger object that um, has a very strange name, actually. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.